Transformed past, then the excitement will be a true excitement. Welcome to BMI Devotion, hosted by Pastor Axon Nongo, every Sunday evening. 
God bless you. Kumbe Mungu alikuwa amepanga ukae kwanza single upate pesa. Kwa nakusaidia kwanza kwa hiyo muda ya kukaa single unatengeneza pesa. Wakija kusema tutahakikisha anakuwa maskini unaingia kwa ndoa. The world is suffering because we have mentoring pretenders. People who will fake a smile yet they are dying inside. People who will show you teeth yet their heart are bleeding. Having faith does not mean you will smile when you are supposed to cry. Having faith means you will trust God even when you are crying. Marafiki wanaweza kukusahau, maisha inaweza badilika, lakini mbingu hatitakusahau. Mungu angali na mpango na wewe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's a great honor, it's a great privilege to have you again on board. I can see my daughters and sons watching. Welcome and may the Lord bless you. I can see my daughter Sarah Kasole. God bless you, my daughter. Thank you for joining. I can see uh, my daughter Victoria Wanja. Wanza, welcome. I can see Elizabeth Ndunge Kawinzi. Welcome. Wow, I can see Ellen Atoga. Welcome, Helen. It's a great honor all the way. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. It's a great honor. Let me welcome all of you uh, to this uh, devotion. And may the Lord bless you. Wherever you are watching us from, I believe before the end of the day, the Lord will bless you. My daughter, Eva Matu, thank you for joining. May the Lord bless you. Welcome. Welcome on board. And I know others are behind the camera, my sons. Uh, Kubai, Elijah, may the Lord bless you for the great work you are doing. Uh, it will not take much time. I believe wherever you are, you will be commenting with us as we move forward. And then the Lord will bless you. And I will be acknowledging you as you join. And we go on with this session as the Lord will enable us. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we bless you. Thank you for this wonderful day that you have made for us. Thank you for this evening of power. Wherever your children are watching from, some it's the morning, others it is during the day, others it's uh, night now. I bless them. I declare that the blessings of God will be upon your life wherever you are, and your testimony will be mighty. In Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. Uh, we have been going through a topic on the process of elevation. We have covered some few we have covered some few elements. We have covered some few uh, uh, character like David, uh, like um, Joseph, and we have been able to cover them in one or another. But uh, today I am going to cover a different topic because of the demand or the request of people. People have requested for a certain uh, topic. People have requested for a certain uh, uh, topic that we began today in this service. And due to that topic uh, that we were touching on during the day, people said, there is a conclusion you did, Pastor, kindly. You are like you rushed on it. So kindly, can you cover it again for us? We saw like you are in a rush. And people have been sending messages. Pastor, we know you will be online today again at the time of devotion. Kindly, can you cover that uh, remaining part that you are talking and you are in a rush so that we may be able to get one or two things out of what you are teaching today. It was so powerful. And the request they made was that the people want us to cover the part of the mountains of influence. When I spoke about the mountains that a Christian must wake up and understand that we are supposed to influence those mountains. And uh, it has been a request today that I touch on that. And that's where I will be 
for few minutes together with you and then we will pray. Uh, we read today and I want to read with you in the book of Hosea, uh, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priests. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I also will lie, ignore you and your children. My daughter, Doroth, welcome. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for joining. My people perish for lack of knowledge. People of God, people are going wrong. People are missing the opportunity to possess what God created them to possess. Not because they are sinning, nor because they are uh, oppressed or suppressed or depressed, but a big part of our lives is controlled by ignorance and the fact that we don't know what God wants us to know. We are ending up misusing our opportunities and our abilities and our capabilities, yet God deposited those gifts in us for a reason and a purpose. Whenever God gives you a gift, it, uh, it has a meaning. There is something that God wants you to achieve. Whenever God anoints you, I want you to understand this child of God. God anoints us differently. The Bible says, out of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, you find that all of us, we are given different capacities and different abilities. But apart from the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, there are so other many empowerments that comes upon our lives through the Holy Spirit. The purpose is that so that we may be effective in what we are doing. My daughter Caroline, welcome. May the Lord bless you. It's a great honor to have you on this platform. And the purpose of God is that you and I, you may, we may achieve, we may reach to the goals that God created us for. Remember this child of God. Salvation is a package. Salvation is not just uh, let us give our life to Christ uh, and wait we go to heaven. That is good. Going to heaven we will go and one day I can assure you, you and I we will be there together enjoying and rejoicing. But before we go to heaven there are some few obligations that we are supposed to take on earth. If for sure salvation was just we get saved and we go to heaven, then uh, the day you got saved uh, you are supposed to die and disappear then uh, I was not supposed to be here today. But because salvation is bigger than that, salvation is beyond just going to heaven. Salvation is all about occupying the earth until he comes for us. Salvation carries a lot of packages in it. It's a full package. It carries a lot of segments in it. And that's what God wants us to understand. But why are we not understanding? It's because we have ignored knowledge. We want just to read some few things and I have come to realize that because we don't want to mature, because we don't want to grow, things are, are becoming tough and we only want to hear the shallow things that are, are being said by so many and different people who don't want to go deeper into the word of God. Tonight, without taking much time, I want to bring you to this knowledge, child of God. That God wants you to mature and dominate the earth. Because when you are created, that is Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, 26. After God spoke about making a man in his likeness. He said so that he may rule over the earth. The rulership of the earth is in our hands. Not the hands of angels is in our hands. And the people who have come to realize that knowledge, they are ruling. The people who have come to realize that knowledge, they are dominating. The people who have come to realize that knowledge, they are taking control over all what God has placed under them. 
child of God, you are not born to be among the number. You are not born to be among the 8 billion or 7 billion or whatever billions the people are giving as, uh, as the rate and the number of people on earth. You are not supposed to be among the number. You are supposed to be the number. You are supposed to live and accomplish what you are created for. What does that mean? You were born original. Stop dying a photocopy. You were born original. Stop evaporating and running away from responsibilities that you were created to do. You may be a pastor. You may be a business person. You may be probably a singer. You may be probably in different angles of the world and different angles of the life that have been given to us. But the real sense is that God wants you to influence in every area where you are. I know somebody will say, I have not got an opportunity. Child of God, no opportunity comes on a silver plate. We do give birth to opportunities. Oh, I have not conceived an idea of what God wants me to do. Child of God, remember this. Time is not on your side. Time was not meant to be there for you. And that's the reason why I came to challenge you today. There is a time to influence. And God has given you a geographical setup of where you are supposed to influence. And so, wake up today. I'm not talking about uh, you, you are supposed to have these qualifications to influence. You are supposed to wake up and understand who you are and what you can influence. And that's the beginning. If you hear me, pipe down and say, I was born to influence. Write down and say, I was born to influence. Glory to Jesus. So listen, there are some things and some truth you have to understand, child of God. Unless you know what God has said in his word concerning you, you will be unable to possess your possessions in Christ. You will be unable to possess unless you know what God says about you in the word. The cheapest way for the devil to keep a man in the dark and rob him of God's blessings is to take away knowledge from that man. I repeat again. The cheapest way for the devil to keep a man in darkness and rob him of God's blessings is to take away knowledge from that person. So whoever wants to finish you does not need so many things. Needs only access to your knowledge and keep it away from you. And that is bondage already. Your oppressor, listen to this again. I come to realize that your oppressor does not need to put chains on your hands and close your feet down. All he has to do is to keep away knowledge from you and you are already in chains. They don't need to bring physical chains and put on you or take you in a prison somewhere. When they take away knowledge from you, when they leave you ignorant, they have already bound you. So what God sent me to bring to you today is knowledge. Knowledge of who you are. Knowledge of what you can. Knowledge and on how you can. And knowledge of telling you that yes, you can. If you hear me say, yes, I can. Yes, Prince Blessing, welcome. May the Lord bless you. My son, Joroge, I can see you. Welcome and may the Lord bless you. Child of God. There is one scripture that always gives me fear. Before I go to the mountains of influence, there is one scripture that always gives me fear. When I look at it, it's in the book of John 21 from verse 18. Peter is talking to God, Jesus and then Jesus tells Peter, Peter, you know what? 
Let's look at it. Let's read it together so that you may come to the understanding of what I'm talking about. John 21, 18. The Bible says, Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you guided yourself and you walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another person will guide you and carry you where you don't even want and wish to go. <laughs> when you were young, you guided yourself and you decided where to go and what to do. But when you will be older, somebody else will do that for you and will determine where you will go and what you will do even when you don't wish to do that. What brings me to that scripture is the concern that I always get in my spirit when I read that scripture. That there is an opportunity to influence and when it is gone, child of God, you remain just a story. You tell people on what you saw, but it is not influential anymore because every one of us has a generation, I say one generation, to influence. The Bible says in the book of Acts that after David has served his generation, he died. And when he died, he went to be with his uh, forefathers. After he has served his generation, the question is this. Have you served your generation? And if you have served your generation, how are you serving your generation? What are the influence? What is the impact you are leaving behind for your generation? Child of God, it's not a matter of asking for longevity of, uh, of life. It's not a matter of saying, God, I want to live for 120 years. And God will ask you, what will you even do with those 120 years? If I'm giving you one year and your one year is so disorganized, it doesn't have a plan, it doesn't have a, pro, a, a, a proposal, it doesn't have a strategic plan, what will you do with 120 years? I shall live long. I shall live to prosper. I shall live to become this. I shall live to... You are talking. It's not a matter of talking, child of God. It's a matter of realizing I am living for this purpose. I am on earth for this reason. I have been created for this reason. I am supposed to influence in this area and this area. And when you are not understanding your day, you will never understand your year. And when you are not understanding your year, you will never understand your life. So, child of God, it's not a matter of just sleep and wake up. It's a matter of understanding. God is giving life to those people who understand what they will be doing tomorrow. You have been intimidating us by saying, you know, no one knows tomorrow. No one knows tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday. <laughs> no one knows tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday. We know that tomorrow is Monday. So wake up and plan your Monday. Don't wait and say, no one knows tomorrow. Tomorrow is Monday. I have told you. So all of us we know tomorrow. It is only laziness that tells us that there is a lion outside there and it is waiting to devour us. Laziness, according to the book of Proverbs. So if you will come to the realization of who you are, and that realization does not come just for, uh, from nowhere, that realization comes as a result of maturity. Hello? And next week, by God's grace, I will talk about maturity, deeper about maturity. That realization will come as a result of maturity. But how do you come to that realization? And when you realize that, what do you do? What I'm about to tell you now. You wake up and you start moving. You wake up and you say, enough is enough. I've wasted a lot of time, but I can no longer waste it anymore. It is time to move. If you hear me say, yes, it is time to move. It is time to influence, child of God. Even if you give me one year on earth, I have to live with an account of that one year. 
Even if you give me a day on earth, I believe when I am finishing that day and I'm going to heaven, God will be looking back at me and say, yes, you accomplished something. Child of God. What are you working on? What you are working on, your vision will determine your existence. When you are on earth, God is not looking at your face to smile and enjoy. God is looking at the achievement you are achieving. God is looking at the purpose you are working on. And as I always say that, there is no single day a purpose will ever be achieved by a child in a pampas. <laughs> Wake up and mature. Wake up and understand that these things are needed. So let's look at this. Child of God, the world that we are living in is a world of decisions. And when you make right decisions, you reap from the decisions you have made. And when you make wrong decisions, you reap from the decisions you have made. I can see my reverend, Pastor Alfred Nongo. Welcome, sir. It's a great honor to have you on board. When you make right decisions, child of God, you reap from your decisions. So let me tell you this. Success is not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Success is a result of decisions that we make day and night. If you decide to be a good, uh, a, a good sleeper, you sleep uh, 18 hours a day, I can assure you, you will reap poverty. And no one can change that. You come to me, I will announce you, lay hands on you, and feet will be laid on you, but still poverty will still strike you. Because it is not a matter of anointing. It's a matter of decisions. Success comes as a result of the decisions you make. That you are not giving up, you are not quitting, you are not changing, you are focusing on the big picture, and whatever you are working on, it's not a matter of try and error, but you are determined, and that's how you move forward. And success also is in two capacities. I am talking of success in terms of what people can see, but also I am talking of what we call good success. Good success is in the book of uh, jo uh, uh, Joshua 1 8, where the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, and then you shall be prosperous and you will have good success. Child of God, it is not a matter of that. Sleep, wake up, and you have good success. It's a matter of good determination. If you hear me, say amen. So, if you have understood that it's a matter of decisions, how do decisions go on? Child of God, people who make decisions on earth are only 5%. When it comes to world decisions, that the, the decisions that change the world are made by a very small percent, between 1 and 5%. And the people who are controlling the wealth, the wealth, the wealth, I mean the wealth of the world, are only 1% of the earth. Earthly population, the 1% of it, that's the only percent that is controlling the wealth of the earth. According to a research and a study which was done by o Oxfam, they proved that 1% of the earthly population controls the wealth of the earth. My question is, are you among the 1%? <laughs> are you one of the 1%? So I was saying again, 5% controls the decisions of the earth. 5%. And 15%, they control the implementation of the decision made by 5%. That is 20%. And then 80%, they follow the decision that have been already implemented. <laughs> come on, come on. Where are you? I repeat, 5%. Of the earthly population. They are the controller of the decisions. They are the decision makers. 
15% out of the remaining 95, they are the implementers of the decision that has been made. And 80, 80% we are followers. <laughs> we follow the decision that has been made. My question is, where are you? Are you among the decision makers? Are you among the implementers? Or among the followers? Let's use this simple example. A decision was made somewhere that my country will no longer be called Zaire, will be called Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo. The implementers, the implementation started and they implemented it. I was not consulted. <laughs> Yet I was born in that nation. I woke up one day and it was proclaimed that from today, the emblem has changed. The, uh, uh, the national anthem has changed. And the name of the nation has changed. You are no longer Zaire. You are now Congo. And we followed. That's how you want to live even a simple life that God has given you. That someone somewhere must make a decision and they implement it and you just come and follow. I came today to deliberate your mind. I came today to deliver your mind. I came today to bring revolution to your mind that you can no longer remain like that. Some decisions of your life, you must make them by yourself and you implement them by yourself and then you enjoy seeing result of your decisions. If you hear me say amen. My daughter John Kawira, welcome. May the Lord bless you. Oh, Geoffrey Baraka, Omondi, welcome. Geoffrey Baraka Moindi, welcome and the Lord bless you. So I came to challenge your mind today that you cannot live under an influence of following forever. You are following even the decision that you are supposed to make yourself. Why? Because somebody told you when you went to school that you are going to school, finish and look for a job, and when you get your job, you make some few coins and life goes on. No, child of God, that is not true. We are not on earth just to make some few coins and live and keep on moving and surviving. We are on earth to live an impact. And in every area you are, you rather leave a big impact behind you than leaving just stories of money where you even don't know where you are going. Child of God, before I go on this, I am not teaching you on how to become popular. I am teaching you on how to become successful. Popularity is not success. I know many people who are suffering depression, yet they are popular because their names and their pockets have never matched. Their names and their achievements have never matched. So I did not come to build popularity. I came to build success in your life. Yea, the people will get to know you. Or they will, not, they will not get to know you. The few who will know about you will carry after you the great impact that you live on earth. So if you hear me say amen. Now, we came up quickly now in the, rest, the remaining few minutes that I have. We came up and we realized that the world is ruled in some segments. And those segments are seven. And those seven segments are called the seven mountains of influence. Those mountains are the mountains that leaves the influence on earth. Those mountains are the mountains that influence on earth. And every mountain is different from the other. But combining them together, the seven, they are the main top influential areas of the world. Today, you will identify your mountain and you will work on it properly so that you may be able 
to come out with a good result. If you hear me say amen. Today you will identify your mountain. I know mine and uh, I am working on mine properly. I'm not giving room to any distraction on my mountain. I am leaving an impact in my mountain. You will identify yours today and you will leave a great impact in it. If you hear me say, I am ready. Mountain number one is the mountain that we call sport, art, and entertainment. Sport, art, and entertainment. Which mountain is this one? This is the mountain that carries out huge, huge influence on earth. Like for example, right now some people are not watching us because they are busy watching a football somewhere. I have seen people committing suicide because a team has been won. A defeat of a team can cause someone to break even into tears. Why? Because sport is powerful. Sport has fanatism on a highest level. Today I had an opportunity to talk with my youth pastor. And I asked him the question. To tell me one of the footballers who is well paid in Africa. And he told me that is called Abameyang. And, and that Abameyang is paid 20 million euros. That's the, that one, that young guy, Abameyang, is playing with Arsenal. Now, listen. This young man he will wake up in the morning, go and train. Train, become serious with what he's doing. He will do some wonders out there. And then, he keeps his feet well, waiting for 90 minutes of the game. <laughs> he will enter into the field, a charangi mpira, and at the end of it, they have signed somewhere that his money has entered. Forget about him. You can mention names and names and names and names. Child of God, what amazes me, among all the names you'll mention, it is difficult to find a Christian. <laughs> it is difficult to find a Christian. Who has been mentioned there. If you ask Abimeyang. What is the secret? Anthony Dish, welcome. What is the secret behind your success? Abimeyang will tell you I do train. And I am devoted and commi committed to what I do. A Christian is telling the son who is playing football outside the house, that you will become uazimu wewe. Why? Because we all believe that we have to go to school, then we get employed somewhere, you start getting 30,000 or 20,000, and that life. Child, go to school, make money when you finish by being employed, and take care of your parents. I am not disagreeing with that. But why are we not involved as a church into this mountain of sport, art, and entertainment? And if we are involved, how shallow is our involvement? What are the strategy that the church we are using as Christians? What are the strategy we are using so that we may be able to be part? Of this mountain that is so influential on earth. Either you like it or not. Our young people are buying PSs. Uh, the, the Playstations. Not because of any other reason. But because they want just to entertain themselves. To enjoy seeing those players playing. And I came to tell you. Time has come whereby Christians will stop seeing 
Abemeyang making 20 million and our children are committing suicide. And our children will wake up and start training so that they may become what God called them to become. If you hear me say, I hear. So it is time to think wider, to expand our minds wider. Youth pastors who are watching me, what are you helping those young people to become? What are you doing with them? Every child is not born to become a pastor. Every child is not born to become an evangelist. Some who are born to become good footballers. Some who are born to become good people are good uh, rugby people. They can play rugby. They can uh, play uh, uh, hockey. They can play football. They can play volleyball. They can play uh, any kind of game. Child of God. Hear me and hear me clear. What you need is to pray that God will help you. That the talent you carry will be identified by someone. And that's all. How did Mark Tyson become Mark Tyson? He was fighting around, uh, 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 along the road with someone. They were fighting. And a guy was passing around and he saw the way the guy is pushing his kicks, his box. And uh, the guy said, this young man is a bandit fighting. But if I take him from this road side and place him in a ring somewhere, I believe this young man can use what uh, people are considering like banditism. He can use it to make a life. So they just took him, they transformed him from what they thought he was a bandit fighting. He became a good boxer and he started making millions. That's how he became a millionaire. What are you doing with the talents you have? <laughs> what are you encouraging your people around with the talents they carry? I come see my wife, Bijou. Welcome, my wife. May the Lord bless you by joining this great program. I can see my friend Musa, Kaiti. Welcome, may the Lord bless you. My daughter Naomi, welcome, may the Lord bless you. It's a great honor to have you on this platform. What are you doing with the talent that you have? And if not you, what are you doing with the talent that your children have? I have spoken of sport a bit. Let's look at uh, art. You find some children are good in decorating. Are good. They are very good. But when you shule, when they usome, Mathematics. Minataka ukuwe. Daktari. Minataka ukuwe. Minataka ukuwe pilot. <laughs> my friend. My friend. Abam Yang is not a pilot. Just pay to make a welcome. May the Lord bless you. Abam Yang is not a pilot. He doesn't even know how to fly a flight. But he's making money that no pilot can ever make. So shift your mind. Understand areas of influence. And start placing people according to the abilities that God has placed in them. Not according to your wishes. I'll never forget a graduation of a young man who graduated as a doctor in one of the universities. And when he graduated as a doctor, on the celebration day, the young man came with a doctorate that he has gotten as a doctor and he placed it in the hands of his parents and he told his father and his mother, Dad and Mom, you wanted me to be a doctor? I have achieved what you wanted. Here is your document. I have achieved your will and your dreams. Can I request for in front of all these people if you can allow me to go and do now my dream? My dream is that I will be an actor, not <laughs> a doctor. And the parents are like, oh my God. Child of God. That child who gave that document to the parent is one of the best actors in Hollywood. He is making money that Kushinda na pasua watu vichwa. Haingi wai kumpea. 
What am I saying? Being a doctor is good. But don't force your child to become a doctor because you are a doctor. Being a teacher is good. But don't force your child to become a teacher because you are a teacher. And Christians, we are losing this guidance. We are losing this mountain. It's being controlled by people who have tattoos. Because that's who they are. They understood that this, this is an opportunity. This is a mountain. We can influence through this. And they are moving. I'm asking you today. Can you wake up and encourage Christians? Can you wake up and encourage yourself that by the power of God, you can train and become one of the most powerful uh, uh, person in the world through sport and art? There is a young man here in Umoja. He sat down. Naka anza kunichapa. Niki kuolete ya picha ya huyo ndugu amenichapa. Hiyo picha inaka kwa hiyo picha naka handsome kuliko vile niko. He made it appear exactly as I am. But I believe he's still looking for a career. <laughs> I heard one day Churchill saying that when he goes home, mama yake anamwambiaga mtoto wangu hujawahi pata kazi. Because the mother believes that what Churchill does is not a job. And that's how many Christians are. They don't believe that comedy can make life. They don't believe that acting can make life. They don't believe that someone can be an actor and be serious. They don't believe that somebody can make poems and be serious. They don't believe that some people were not meant for papers. And, and black bodies. Some people were meant for talent. And when they present what they carry, you realize that the world can be shaken by them. Wake up today. Pick that mountain. Let me come on the uh, conclusion of that mountain. The conclusion of that mountain is that child of God. On, under that mountain, we have what we call music. Music. The church has lost control over music. Right now you listen to the songs we write and you wonder dunia ya kina Angela dunia ya kina Mary Ateno dunia ya kina Kasanga dunia ya kina Alemoloto back in Congo dunia ya wale walioandika nyimbo ukazisikiza I have a brother of mine. He's called Manit. He began writing songs in 1980. The songs they were writing that time. You listen to the song, you cry, and you feel blessed. You feel there is a knowledge and anointing in this song. Those songs can never be sung that nowadays. Judy Kialo, welcome. Welcome and the Lord bless you. Those songs can never be sung nowadays because the young people will say, Dinabo, Zilizopendwa Nimbaya. Why? Because we don't want content. We don't want quality. We don't want content. We just want entertainment. Hey, hey. And that's all. And that's the reason why musicians wanaamuka leo wanainuka and down tomorrow their names are no longer there. Why? Because they are coming with a good speed but with shallow result. Shallow content. Shallow ideas. Can we wake up today and take back the control of this mountain to God? Can we have musicians in church who will challenge when you hear that so and so have a concert that he wants to mislead people somewhere and cause young people to drink somewhere? You hear and so and so has a concert also 
and people will leave those funny entertainers and go and listen gospel because they know there is a content of knowledge and anointing out of the, 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 the music that the church will produce. Nani alikudanganya ya kwamba studio zote nzuri ni za wale ambao hawamjui Mungu na studio zote mbaya ndio zenye tutakao tunaenda ndani kama kanisa tutatoa tu wibo na huo wibo wetu tutakao tunawaibia wakati ambapo mnaingia kwa ibada I refuse Some of you you are watching Some of you you are watching My daughter Liz Kawinzi wake up produce your album release your music look for a good producer you have a good voice i'm just using you as an example take control over that mountain that you are under take charge over that mountain release do wonders with the knowledge and the talent that god has given you and move mountains And see if God will not use what you are doing to take back people to him. You know the good part of it that, is that God is opening a wave of a new generation of musicians who are coming and they are correcting what the wave we had last time have done. New songs with inspirations and content and excellency are coming back. And I believe they will bring us back that mountain to God. If you hear me say amen. So. There is another mountain. Now mountain number two. Is the mountain of media. <laughs> mountain of media. Is a mountain that is making people. Wealthier people are behind the media. People are making great success through that mountain. I know some people. They were nowhere. They were nobodies. When they got opportunities to start working with different media houses, their lives transformed. But the question is, how many Christians have you had among those anchors that we have? If we had Christian anchors, news anchors, then we could be having news that reflects the image of God in it. Even when they are passing news of nations, you find there is hope in news. Not fear that they are selling day and night through the news that we are, giving, we are receiving. Why? Because the mountain of media has been taken captive. By people who are not of the church. The people who are not of God. The people who are not of... Uh, they are not Christians. They are the ones controlling the media. What do you want to tell the world? If media is not in our hands. How do we want to turn the world and make it... Uh, sub, sub, subject to the will of God? If media is not in our hands. Two years ago, some pastors could never preach on Facebook. Because they believed that Facebook belongs to Satan. <laughs> and they were saying, Ah, oh, Munyama, Munyama, Munyama. And I've seen some of them have started preaching kwa Munyama. Because they have realized that Munyama hakuji hivo rafiki yangu. The day Munyama taanza cooperate, the church will not be on earth. So, before Munyama anza cooperate, do what God is telling you to do. Stop excusing yourself. Ah, church, I am looking at churches which will open media houses, TV stations, radio stations, and other platforms that they will open and create excellency out of what we are delivering, the content of power, so that when we are controlling the air, Satan will not distract our children with funny cartoons which are carrying only genocides. You know the enemy has hidden himself in cartoons for our children 
and they are coming through cartoons and we think every cartoon you watch today, I can assure you, you will find in it magic, you will find I don't know in it sorcery, you will find in it some names which are not uh, well known and you find children are using some terminologies nowadays which are very funny and you wonder where did they get them from. Uh, you hear a child is telling you some words and you wonder even yourself, you cannot mention them from your mouth. You wonder where did this child get them from. They are exposed to media and we are not interested to know what those media are doing because we have lost the mountain and we are busy praying in tongues yet our children are being destroyed if you hear me say I will believe and take back control over that mountain children of God we cannot remain quiet when the media has been taken right now if you are having any someone on, 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 online, you look at the number of people who are watching, you'll be surprised. But just go on and put blind spot, put blacklist, put uh, 24, uh, chrono, Jack Bauer, designated survivor. Put them and see the way hundreds of thousands of people will start watching. Why? Because that what the popularity has gone for. And we people of the church, we are losing direction. We are going behind what the media is imposing us. And we forget that we are supposed to bring back that mountain. So today I pray that our children will go back to school. Our children will start studying media. Uh, and we will create ideas on how to take and strategies on how to take back media Christ. If you hear me, say I hear. So media is gone. All the songs of great people are not being aired. You bring your song, the first thing they want to check is it a gospel? If it's a gospel, they rush. They make sure that it is going to another group. Hello? Hello? But what is can is shallow gospel. Those ones they will bring. Because they want to expose us the way we are. Good preachers, powerful preachers are there. But their sermons can never be aired. They are looking for those who are Tumambegu, Pandambegu, Kolambegu, Tapikambegu. So that they may show the world how the church has lost it. We are coming. To repossess that possession. We are coming with good strategies to take back media for Christ. If you hear me, you don't just say amen, but you start expanding your mind wherever you are on how to influence the area where you are through the mountain of media. If you hear me, say amen. The following third mountain is the mountain of governments. The mountain of government. Government or politic. People of God. All of us, we are running away. And we are saying that politics is a dirty game. I came today to tell you the church must raise powerful politicians. People who will enter and rule nations for Christ. This United Nations, this UN must be led by mighty, mighty Christians. If you hear me say amen. Why? Because numerically, Christians, we are many. If it's a matter of elections, we are many. But what is the problem? Why do, don't we win? Because we are so much divided and so much judgmental that any time one of us wants to make a step, we are quick to judge. Oh, I'm a Nguka. Oh, I'm a, oh, Shetani, I'm a Mukula. Shetani, I'm a Maliza. So, when you're a Shetani, I'm a Maliza, what are you doing? <laughs> I said it somewhere today, and I will say it again. I don't advocate for pastors to join politics. I don't. But, I believe Christians must be in forefront of politics so that decisions of nations 
may be well made. Corona has been a lesson to churches and they will come to realize, all of us will come to realize that if for sure, Zakia Juma welcome, if for sure we were leading, if we were in forefront leading our nations, there are ways we could handle things during Corona time and churches and uh, the house of God could be treated in a certain manner and in a certain way. Right now, it is all about one hitting the other, the other hitting the other. Why? Because we are not the one de making decisions. Decision making has been taken. And we are busy saying that we are a MCA, I'm a washetan. Children of God, can we wake up and take leadership? Can we wake up in every nation wherever you are and do a smart and a clean politic? I, as your pastor, my work is to ordain you. My work is to play for you, pray for you. My work is to kick you ahead. Your work is to lead, rule, and dominate. I, as your pastor, my work is to pray for you. My work is to instruct you. My work is to pray and guide you. Your work is to take control of this mountain. Just imagine if the church was in control of politics, we could not be fighting on our head today by the bills which are being passed every single day. All the bills of gayism, lesbianism, the bills of abortion, the bills which are being passed every single day and they are against the word of God and we are busy eating each other and saying, oh, that person ame anguka, uyo muta ame pagani. Stop! Let's go back and take back that mountain before it is too late. Let's believe that we will see presidents who acquire members of a certain church somewhere, if you hear me say amen. We will see legis legislatives who are making decisions in the parliament. They are passing laws somewhere, yet they are Christians and they fear God. Laws they are passing are under the will of God. What about other positions in the government? They must be held by people who have uh, who have the integrity because they are Christians. People who understand that these things must be done without corruption. These things must be done without interfering with our faith. We have to deal with these things uh, with honor. And then the nations will please God and blessings will flow over nations. But right now, children of God, the mountain of politics is being ruled by murderers, robbers, thieves, and all kinds of... While Christians, we are busy in the church. Father, we pray for our nation. Father, we cover our nation with the precious blood of Jesus. Father, you will do wonders. And uh, to make it to us, you are busy praying that God will heal the nation and you forget that your process of leading that nation can be the healing that you are praying for. Wake up today and take a position to change the mountain of politics. If you hear me, say amen. Another tough mountain is the mountain of family. The fourth mountain is the mountain of family. People of God, kill a family, you have killed a nation. Kill a family, you have killed a ministry. Kill a family, you have finished us. We have been taught on how to live without fear 
of destruction of families. Divorce is on the peak because Satan knows that united families can transform the world. So Satan is pushing harder to make sure that we are too much separated and in conflict with each other. Right now, I believe the cases which are on, on court, different courts in the world, the highest percentage of the cases are the cases of families. The wife wants to divorce. The wife who needs, uh, the husband needs a separation. I don't know. I am claiming the right of my children. I don't know. I am claiming. And that's all what we are doing. We are only ready, destroying, breaking, and pulling down. Who bewitched us? And that's the reason why. Families are sick. And we are not taking any step ahead. Family mountain is one of the powerful mountains. But we have been told that we are not supposed to give birth to more than two children. If you go ahead, give three. And Christians, we are busy agreeing. The rate of Christians by birth is going down every single day because we have been taught family planning yet on the other side of the world they are not on family planning they are on family planting they are planting every single day <laughs> they are marrying many wives giving birth to many children and then it's only we Christians who are being taught focus on God not on many children. Not even on wives. We are only the, the only race. The only kind of people who are being taught that many children are not good. Yet, let me give you a very simple mathematics. People who are giving birth with that speed that you are seeing them giving birth with. They are red. You find in one house 13. And uh, that is one house. You have not counted like uh, three, four, five houses under one person. <laughs> so let's look at 10, 10, 10. Forget about 13. So in one man has 40 children. Hello? And in the area, Christians are 30. I mean 30 because one man has 40 children, but Christians, we have one child, one child, one child. And we are 15. So we are 30 in the house. When those children grow, they reach 18. They have right to make elections. When they choose... Your two children will choose you. And your neighbor's two children will choose him. And even if Christians, we join ourselves and we choose one candidate, we have 30 voices. One man has 40. So if they will come together 15, how many are those? 40 times 15 houses? That's how we are being defeated. I know it is a painful truth, but you have to hear it. On the other hand of the family, we are not giving birth because we want to elect or to be elected, but because we want to rule. And a big number, the more they are, the more they will rule over us, the more they will control us. And you know that's the fact. You cannot deny child of God. So what are we doing? On the other hand of the family. It's only family, Christian families, that spend night without praying. The last time they read the Bible, I don't think they were reading about Jesus. They were reading about, uh, probably about uh, Sophia the Soft, Sophia the Great, Sophia the Best, or Nicolodian. <laughs> 
Because that's what they have been teaching their children. Teaching their children about how to sing songs which are not defined. How to dance with cartoons and all those. That is not bad. That is needed sometimes. But you cannot keep that as that the only tool you have. Our children must be brought up according to the book of uh, Proverbs that teach your children the ways of God and they shall never depart from them even when they are old. What are we teaching our children? A child is now five years. He doesn't even know how to say our Lord's Prayer. But we say we are building families. Where and how? Hello? Families. Right now, people who are watching me, I believe some of you, you are not in good terms with your, your fathers, your mothers, because you think they are too much. They are asking too much. They are asking too much. And you have been lied to by a so-called uh, uh, spiritual parent that uh, uh, even if even if your parent, your biological father or mother have cast you, there is a way you can uh, there is a way you can do it. You can be redeemed by your, uh, your, 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 your spiritual parent. Child of God, what bullshit is that? What you need to know today what you need to remember today, what you need to put in your mind today, is that before ministry, there was family. And after ministry, there will be family. Hello? For your information to know the power of family, when you are born, you are not born in church. You are born in a house somewhere. You are brought to your home somewhere. And the day you die, no matter where you will be, you will be taken again back to your home. Because you are a family person. So treat your family with the respect and dignity. Build the honor and the principles of the family. Stop building disunity in families. Stop enjoying and embracing divorces and separations like if that's the only solution to the families. Child of God. Can we rebuild back our families? Can we rebuild back our families so that we may be stronger and build back our nations? When we talk of families, I am talking of children a bit. Let's look at children just a bit. I said it in the morning, I will say it again. Parents, we are investing for our children. And that is good, and may the Lord bless you. If you hear me say amen. But the problem, we are not investing in our children. We are busy keeping money, saving money. When I go, the Bible says, a good man leaves wealth and good wealth for his children. I have seen people who have killed themselves because they have been fighting for the wealth that were uh, given to them remained back by their parents because the parents kept money but they did not keep integrity in their children. They kept money for their children but they did not build respect and honor, love and unity in their children. They never taught their children some truth. So in return, the money became a problem. The wealth remaining became an issue because the children were taught only that money is everything, but they were not given values of life. Parents, can we wake up today and take the mountain of family serious? Create time with our children. Not making money. I will never forget a shocking story that I was told of a girl who came and asked for his father, Daddy, kindly, can you help me with a hundred dollars? And the father gave her a hundred dollars and the father was like, what will you do with that money? He said, don't worry, dad, I will tell you. Then the following day, the daughter came and said, dad, 
I know you are doing consultancy. How much do they pay you for an hour? And the father said, they pay me around $100 per hour. So the daughter said, Dad, uh, here I have this 100 It's mine because you gave it to me. And I'm bringing it to you. Dad, kindly, can you take this $100 and give me one hour of consultancy? <laughs> Daddy, you have been too busy, you have been too occupied, and you have been there making money, bringing us popcorns, bringing us pikiches, bringing us hababa, bringing us hubabobo, and we have enjoyed. But daddy, I don't need all those things. I only need one hour with you, and I have money to pay. That is so shocking because I believe some of the children that you have in your house, they are busy looking for that opportunity to get money that they will pay you for you to stay with them at least for a few hours. Why? Because we are investing for our children, but not in our children. I said it today. It's only your child that you can live with your house girl, and the house girl is still new. But you'll never leave your uh, bedroom's key to your uh, house girl and she's still new. you rather close your room and hide the key or go with it to wherever you are going. But leave the child with a non-person because we don't value children. <laughs> we have other things that we value most and we only show like my child is everything after you have made money, after you have spent time with friends, after you have taken time to enjoy, that's the time you come and remember, my child is everything. And you come and you check on the child when the child is asleep, and you leave the house when the child is asleep, and you want the child to have some characters that will reflect you in the, in the process. So let me tell you, child of God, we only share some blood with our children, but the character they are having are made by the teachers in schools and by the house helpers that we are having because ourselves, we don't spend time with them. And that's how families are going down. Husbands are busy making money. Wives are busy making money. And when we have money, I have my money and the wife, <laughs> the wife has hers too. So what next? My daughter Mary Washera, welcome. When I have money, and your daughter has money, and my wife has money, what next? We all depend, become independent. So, the following is, I can live without you, and you too. I can live without you, and we separate. And that's what is happening. Why? Because when we were organizing, even let me start it on our, I, I came on children, about investment. Let me start where it begins. Christians, we are always busy organizing and preparing for weddings, not marriages. <laughs> and that's how the mountain of the family is going down every single day. You spend one billion on a wedding, but if we ask you what you have done to make sure you have a stable marriage, nothing. Nothing. The Lord help you. If you hear me, Say, I hear. Mountain of education. That's another mountain that is very serious. God wants us to take that sector into control. We must take the sector of education. The schools that we are sending our children, the schools that we are building, must carry Christians' foundations, Christians' principles, Christians' uh, rules and directions. We must learn as churches to build strong schools and to teach with authority and excellency to make sure that the children we are teaching in our schools are becoming the best. Look at all the best schools all over. They are not ours. Look at the Ministry of Education. Nobody will even care to put values of Christians in the curriculums. We are only busy looking on how Mungu atatusaidia tuende mbinguni. Tuende mbinguni wapi? Our children are spending 8 or 12 hours sometime, 8 hours in, in classes. 
my daughter will leave home sometime at five. And she will be back at five in the evening. Those are the, and when she comes back, she's pampered with homeworks all over for me to assist and uh, just to see her through. So she's in school all through. My son, the same. And we are not putting an eye to see what are the curriculums our children are using, what are the things they are doing, what are the values they are being taught in school, what are the names they are being given in school, even when they are acting, what are the kind of act, uh, uh, theaters and uh, uh, acting they are, they, are, they are presenting, what are their presentation? Nothing. Nothing. We are lazy. Let me even ask this. If you don't even check on the homework of your child, how do, will you ever check on the school? If I was to ask you who is watching right now, welcome Mary, I am so happy that you have come. Yeah, late, but uh, I know you will get something. If I ask you the class, the name of the class of your, of your child, you don't even know if it is standard uh, class 2 magenta or class 4 uh, orange or class 3 cockroach. You don't know. If I ask you the name of your teacher, you don't know. The teacher that teaches your child, the teacher that spends 12 hours with your child, you don't know. 8 hours with your child, you don't know. Where are we going? May the Lord help us. I say may the Lord help us. I say may the Lord help us. Amen. So can we stop investing for our children and start investing in them? Everything that we do, let our children carry values. Not just our children. Families, can we stop dividing and fighting and killing each other? Right now, the news is of families and marriages are scary. So and so has given poison to his wife and the children, and then he hanged himself. Why? Because people, church, we are busy teaching about going to heaven. And we forget that before we go to heaven, all of us, even the one who are preaching going to heaven, we are fearing to die. So before we die, can we teach it also that uh, we have to respect values of life? We have to honor families. We have to honor each other. We have to love each other. We have to stop going behind each other. We have to stop cheating on each other. We have to stop playing back uh, behind our, our lives like that. Can we teach Church, can we wake up and create forums for men? Because some men are just men by gender, but their behaviors in their families are tough. They are tough. Can we create forums for women who are not just talkatives, but they are understanding the values of a family? Can we create forums for young people so that they may understand and come to conquer this giant that is following them of drug abuse and alcoholism and drunkenness. So that families may be sober. Can we come up with programs? Yes, we can. And uh, we are not waiting for people to come and sponsor our programs. We can start in a simple way and we make lives impacted. If you hear me say, I hear you. Families. 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 The mountain of economy and business. That's another Kizungu Bokote. When we talk of the mountain of economy and business, we are talking the mountain of employment. We are talking about that the mountain where we realize that the church 
We are struggling today because the positions we are holding, hello, the positions we are holding can never allow us to make right decisions and powerful ones. Listen. You find all the companies, their CEOs, their MDs, and all other managers are not saved. So Christians tunakuja sisi ni wale wakuosha, wale wakufua, wale wakupika chai, wale wakufukuzwa pale, and then we are willing to go and serve God, but you have no right over your own life. You are like a slave. They decide when you enter the office and they decide when you leave the office. They, they decide what you do in the office and how you do it in the office. Number two, our performance in our area of work is another problem. Oh, I have been fasting and praying, believing God. That's the reason why I am not thinking right. But my friend, you have been employed not in church. You have been employ employed in a, in a company somewhere. Can you work smart? Can you differentiate? Eight hours to work and eight hours for work. Hello? I say, can you differentiate eight hours to work and eight hours for work? You may be in your place of work for eight hours and you are doing nothing. Today, start counting every single day. I had a privilege to serve in my life under uh, one powerful man who understood the power of working. And he taught to me that every single minute count when it comes to excellency and achievement. He taught me how to make my daily reports, weekly reports, monthly reports, quarterly reports, and annual reports. And by teaching me such things, I became stronger in understanding how to deliver to the expectations that I have and that other people have. From the teachings that I got and the trainings that I got, I stopped being supervised. I don't need any supervisor for me to perform or to work. I don't hide behind prayers to promote laziness. <laughs> I do work hard and I don't just believe to eat from someone sweat and I have not sweat. I believe that when I have worked, toiled, and make sure something is coming out, the thing I eat, I eat with right and I enjoy. So, my question is, I can see my son Alexander Raphael watching. Welcome, may the Lord bless you. Papa Kizaza, welcome, may the Lord bless you. We are in different sectors of economy and businesses. Some are employed, but Christians are very lazy sometimes. You are supposed to be in your place of work at 8. You come at 10 and you are speaking in tongues. I pray that the Lord will cause the eyes of my boss will not know that I entered at 10. You are not closing your boss's eyes. You are blind. Child of God. You cannot be reporting late in your place of work and expecting that God will keep on covering you. God is not in the business in heaven in the business of covering lazy people and uncommitted people. You cannot be sleeping earlier and wake up late and expect your business to grow. You are in bed at 11 while somebody has already made uh, some hundreds and thousands from morning up to ten, you come and you say we are competing. Competing with who? 
And that's the reason why by running out of ideas, we are busy waiting for somebody to start a kiosk there so that you too may come and start a kiosk and understand that hey, I can put a kiosk here. No, that is not how we operate. God wants you to be creative. God wants you to have innovations. God wants you to be innovative. God wants you to have ideas and proper and clear and original ideas from you. Be original. Create ideas. Nowadays, they are not paying strength only. They are paying also good ideas. If you hear me say amen. Be innovative, child of God. In your place of work. It will promote you. you. Your company will not wish to lose you. Because they know that you are innovative. I was told one day this story. That uh, engineers came from America and they went to Japan. And they requested uh, uh, the uh, Japan engineers to show them the way they do a certain kind of a car. And they were showing because it was the latest at that particular time. And they were able to take them through the process and they explained everything. When they finished, the American engineer said, wow, this is uh, amazing. But we are so much shocked. How come you have shown us all your tactics? We are going back to America. We will make that car and we will take you out of the market. The Japanese engineer said, I am very frank. I was able to show you everything because I know by the time you reach the airport, I will have gotten a new idea. <laughs> so you will be going with the former idea because when you reach the airport, I will already gotten a new idea. That's what God is calling Christian to wake up and be smarter with. People who can create ideas, you sell to your company and they realize that it is so smart and so nice, they can only buy it by employing you to a higher position so that you may be able to run and maneuver and manage it. Sio kila siku. Sikiza ni kwambia mtoto wa Mungu. Itabia ya kuzoea, kuzoea tu ulegevu, ulezi, ulezi, uvivu, uvivu. Na ndio kwa maana kila mtu atakuwa anakuzarau. My sisters the day you will start making money, I can assure you, money with good character, you can never miss a man. <laughs> they will come running because they, they respect and they value people who understand who they are. And they are doing what they are supposed to be doing. Today I was sitting with one of my daughter two days after service. That daughter of mine has a car, and behind her car, she was selling uh, onions and uh, and uh, tomatoes and uh, vegetables and and I went and looked at that and I said like, I was like, uh, this is what I am expecting to see the kingdom of God developing. I am looking at people who will understand that my car is not for luxury because that car is not using water and even if it was water, you don't go to fetch it from the lake. It's using uh, oil. It's using petrol. It's using uh, di uh, diesel. It is using money. So you can use it to make money. That's how we make life. You hear me say I hear. I heard during Corona some pastors were able to sell their equipment, their chairs to survive. The question is, are they theirs? I think they have been dedicated to God. They belong to God. Why? Because they have been caught, taken by surprise. Economy is going down. And themselves have not organized anything. You wake up on Sunday expecting the offering for you to survive. That is not the way we operate, children of God. Paul said, I love Paul. I love Paul. Paul said, I have been working with my own hands so that I may not be a burden to you. Child of God, there are things you have to start doing. And when it comes to the mountain of economy and business, 
Wake up and start arranging and organizing. Be smart in what you are doing. Some people are going deeper. I was talking just to some few friends and I'm telling them, some people are going deeper in the land, Maasai land or any other land, deeper down there. And they go and they buy cheap land. They prepare their document and they buy cheap lands and that's all. After years. One friend of mine went and bought a land at 300. 300,000 Kenya shillings. I don't know five acres at that time. Right now, even if you give him 20, 20 million for those acres, he can never. Why? Because he invested. And now, he is a millionaire automatically. Why? He was smart in thinking. Wake up and create ideas and opportunities when they are still ahead. That is what we call business. Business is not just to wait, seeing muta mefungua hapa hivi supermarket, ah, amefungua hapa hivi kinyozi, na we unaweka kinyozi. Muta kifungua hapo hivo, ah, mahali ya kushona nguo, na we unaweka ingini. Are you doing business or you are doing competition? Wake up. Child of God. Wake up. Wake up. And make sure that what you are doing is reflecting, controlling the mountain of business. Hello? People investing in land. Forget about land. You, you are busy looking for one million to buy a car so that you may show so and so that you too you are okay. Busy becoming popular, building popularity. Great people don't build popularity. Great people, they work on their greatness. Greatness is not popularity. Greatness is success. If you hear me say I hear. So the mountain of business is being taken. Why is being taken? Because when they make decisions of uh, businesses, the time the great business people make decisions, uh, those are the time you always sleep. The time tenders are being fought for. That's the time you always sleep. How will you win a tender when even your proposal, you don't know even how to write a proposal. You don't even know that. You, you don't have to know how to write a proposal, but you can hire somebody who will write a good proposal for you, and that proposal will give you the business that you will hire a contractor who will do that business for you, and you get your share, and the contractor will get his share. That's how people are surviving. People are brokers and they are making good money you you are down and say i don't know sijawai somea iki sijawai somea kile sijawai somea kile wake up they are tenders all over go and make a, an arrangement look for somebody who can write a good proposal for your company register company registering a company is not a problem look for somebody who can make good proposals for you go and make sure you apply make good defense of your proposal let you be given the tender go and look for some good contractors who can do the work you have been given and you look at the amount you are paying them and you broke between the giver of the tender and the implementers of the work you get money that's how we make life out there You are sitting down in Angojea when you let chakula in Angojea when you let maji you tangojea wakulete usingiz if you hear me child of God say I am hearing. All the big businesses are being taken by non-Christians. All the big tenders are being won by non-Christians. Why? Because they are fearing that Christians are lazy. Mungina kaniambia sivi zetu tunjo zinakutaka zinanuka chips because they have been anointed to mpaka zinakani kama iyo karatasi ya kufungia chipo anointed. It's not a matter of anointing them. It's a matter of working hard. If you can do a small business and do it smart, you will see result and you will control your area of life. Let me tell you, child of God, there is no respect when they know that there is nothing you can give out. People don't respect you. 
when they know that they are always the ones who give you. When the, you have something that you can give, people will always respect you. I will never forget. I went to preach somewhere. And with the place where I went to preach, I was not well received because they never knew me. And they were just considering me like any other person. And when we were sitting down, they, were, they took me to a certain hotel, a funny hotel somewhere. And there I could not sleep because I was suffocating with the dust and everything. I felt like I felt sick here. But when we were going now to church for me to see the place where I am being called to minister, I checked with the pastor to know the budget of what he's doing. So he said he's struggling to meet the budget and also and so forth. So I went to my pocket and I covered his budget. I told him, this amount can help you to cover the budget of what you are doing. There is no need for me to call for offering in the church because we have already covered your budget. The next thing I saw, when the pastor realized that I am not a beggar, I did not come to collect offering so that we may divide. The pastor went and looked for a good hotel. And he said, man of God, you, are not, you do deserve to be in this hotel where you are. There is another good hotel somewhere. I said, okay. In my heart, I said, you knew that there is another good hotel somewhere. It is the honor and respect commanding. When we went to that other good hotel, I took money from my pocket. I paid. All the time I will be here, I have already cleared. I can assure you, the power of God that we experienced in that meeting was not just because of the anointing, but also because of the respect that the man who is talking to us is not a beggar. God has blessed him. Child of God, wake up today and invest in different areas of life. Wake up today and think economically. Wake up today and think business-wise. Wake up today and understand that one source of income will never make you a millionaire unless you are stealing. <laughs> one source of income will never make you a millionaire unless you are stealing. Employment, especially employment, will never. Wake up today. Do business. Create opportunities. Create ideas. Create projects. Join tenders. Join investment companies. Create opportunities and see if God will not connect you with the right people and powerful people. And that's how we make great life in the mountain of business and economy. Don't just sleep on one area. With a die. Takufa, wake up and understand that blessings that are legitimate, they are allowed by God. Making legitimate money, finance, even if you are a man of God, it is allowed. Don't just die poor where you are. If you hear me say amen, and the last mountain is the mountain of religion. Religion. The mountain of religion. A mountain that has been taken captive. Other religions are uniting themselves so that they may be able to achieve their big picture. Promoting the gods which are not even true. And they are succeeding in their agendas. We are busy tying, uh, tearing each other apart. We are busy fighting for positions, busy creating oppositions, busy fighting each other. 
this pastor is from the church of that one is the, from the church of that one is from this church and that church and that's how we are busy fighting these are my members these are my oh, why can't we wake up and understand that this is a kingdom and we must have a kingdom mentality of coming together with one purpose one image one determination that god has called us to conquer our enemy is one let's identify that enemy and stop dividing ourselves as christiani christians we are so much divided into different segments and that's the reason why we are not strong the day we will come and be united speak the same language understand that we don't split as christians we multiply we speak the same language and we carry the same goal in terms of accomplishing and pu the purpose of the cross into the world will be great but we are busy killing each other destroying each other distracting each other and destroying each other may the lord deliver us and help us to take the mountain of religion back to us because other religions are coming speedily to come and overtake us and we are busy just talking of the uh of the research which was long time done that we are two billion christians we are three billion christians and other religions are coming speedily can we wake up church and tuck back the mountain that we have been controlling and dominating if we do that children of god we will be able to pray with knowledge and understanding and then we will be able to change the generations that God has given us by the power of the blood of Jesus. We have one advantage is that our God is alive. He's alive and is in us. He is the creator of all those mountains. He has given us power over them. We can do clean business, children of God. The reason why human trafficking is taking control is because the business people who have money drug and abuse why drug and uh, uh, all those things why are the, those uh, businesses are controlling because we are asleep let's wake up and do legit business as christians and see if we will not take control let's wake up and do one uh, wonderful education uh, strategies and see if we'll not take back that mountain let's wake up and do wonderful strategies and uh, principles for our families and see if we'll not take that mountain let's wake up and put our people in govern governments let's release our people with good knowledge good ideas let's teach our people let's send our people not just to do theology let them do uh, political science and other things place them in big uh, positions and see if this corruption we are talking about will not end. Let's put back our people into the control of the media and see if we will not take control over it. And then, let's allow our people to develop their talents and see if we will not take the mountain of sport back to control and back to God. If we wake up today, we'll be great people. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord sustain you. This is a night of teaching. I've finished what I had for you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I bless your children. I have taught. But you are the one who will help them to reach and become what they're supposed to be. Dear Lord, let that these mountains of influence be real to us as church of Jesus Christ. That we will train our people and deploy them into different areas and together they will bring glory and honor back to you. We honor you, we praise you, and we exalt you that the viewers will take identifications of their mountains. They will identify their mountains and they will start working towards them. Then result and mighty result will come back and then the Lord will be exalted. I bless your children today for the knowledge of your word that we will not perish anymore for lack of knowledge. Help us, our God, to take control over these mountains now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you for watching. May the Lord sustain you for watching. May the Lord keep you for being part of this uh, devotion. 
See you again next Sunday, the same time. May the Lord bless you.